Hello and welcome to another edition of JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. Match week 4 saw goals galore starting with the first of our televised doubleheader from the Anthony Spalding Sports Complex where defending champions Mount Pleasant journey to Kingston to take on Mullines United. Donald Oliver takes us through the highlights. It is a warm, sunny day in the community of Arnett Gardens as we prepare for a Sunday evening of football here. And two matches we have in store for you, including the first one up on the agenda, Malines United against the champions, Mount Pleasant. As we take a look at the starting lineup for Malines United, Peter Harrison, of course, is between the sticks. A back four of Palmer, Andrews, Frankson and Gordon. Uh, in the middle of the park, Rashawn Livingston, our player to watch, Suja McBean. Uh, Jeremy Nelson and uh, Samara Dennis will be playing on the right side of the midfield and up top Jason Wright and uh, Thorne Simpson Wright of course he scored 14 goals last term and he's the only scorer in the Malines United unit after three match weeks for Mount Pleasant they have a, a few losses players going away to represent their nation Shaquan Davis remains between the sticks the back four, just one change with Fitzroy Cummings coming in for uh, Jamoy Topi. Suna Makala on the left, Gawain Austin on the right. Shaquille Da will be paired alongside uh, Cummings. In the middle of the park, you have to look out for this youngster, uh, Nathaniel James from Trinidad and Tobago, 19 years old. He's expected to be a star. I'm not sure how long in this league. Doxley is beside him. And uh, Devontae Campbell, Akwasa Chong, Kimoni Bailey, uh, and Romeo Guthrie complete the starting lineup for Malines United. As we take a look at the full match highlights here, Dennis was so involved in this game and barreled his way through, was lucky, but that was a magnificent save from Shaquan Davis. Dennis thought for all the world that he had scored here, but Shaquan Davis was in the way. Gordon with the corner kick at the top of the box, shot coming in, the deflection just missing. Yep, just wide of the mark. But Lions United had the big chances in that first half. And uh, this was an opportunity, again on a platter. And uh, Simpson finding the defender. And then this one, Marlon Allen threw on goal and uh, Peter Harrison was in the way. And Livingston making a nuisance of himself. That I felt was a clean challenge, but the referee pointed to the spot. Austin wasn't pleased at all. You can take a look, closer look there. Yeah, that was a challenge that was clean. Jeremy Nelson though from 12 yards scoring. The first goal of the game in the 70th minute of play. And Malines United with the advantage. And then good work by Kimoni Bailey, rubbing Palmer, setting it up for Marlon Allen. He had come on as a sub a few minutes before Marlon Allen. And the, he would open his account this season with that touch just in front of goal. That was 1-1. And then it became 2-1. Chong with a beautiful slip pass through and barely first time. Wonderful finish. Beautiful stuff by Bailey getting his second goal of the season. And then the free kick from Jeremy Nelson, brilliantly touched over by Shaquan Davis there. And then the final bit of action, Bailey was cut down and the penalty was awarded. A push in the back there, in fact, and Chong made it safe from 12 yards. His second goal of the campaign, and that was that. The champions coming from behind to win. You got the go-ahead goal. That must have been exciting from your perspective, but you couldn't hold it in the end. Got the go-ahead goal, which is a plus. But we, after such a brilliant first half against a 
a, a good team uh, against Mount Pleasant. We should have put them away in the first half, you know, but one mistake lead, lead to the other. And we spoke at the start of the game, and I asked you how you would manage, for example, the fluent play of Mount Pleasant, and you did an excellent job of that, as you said, in the first half. In fact, you had all the chances, but didn't convert. Yeah, and we have all the chances, and like a team against, we have to we have to put them away. We have to put away our chances. Goals win games, and if you don't put away chances, that, that this is what happened. Mount Pleasant, well, they are perfect. Three wins from three. It wasn't an easy three points, Davian, but you got the job done, and that's what's important. Yeah, yeah, the most important thing was that we won the game. Um, playing against Moline, I think they had um, two strikers who were very physical. We really couldn't get the ball off them in the first half. They got the ball in some very dangerous areas. And the cars are some problems, but I think in the second half we adjusted and we did well. Mount Pleasant maintained their perfect record to start the season, while Malines continued to find the going tough after suffering their second defeat of the campaign. We take our first break here on JPL in 30. Stay with us for more right after the break. Welcome back to JPL in 30. The second match of Sunday's doubleheader saw home side Arnett Gardens hunting their second win of the new campaign as they welcomed garden rivals Stivoli and former Arnett coach Jerome Waite who is now calling the shots at the West Kingston based team. Let's pick up the action with Donald Oliver. This has been the quintessential arch rivalry in the land of wood and water for decades. Football means more and football meant more. This is the battle of the gardens. Arnett Gardens and their starting lineups now with Richardo White back in goal for the junglists. And they will have a back four of Philando Wing, Roshan Amos, Joel Cunningham, and Gerald Neal now preferred at right back for Arnett Gardens. Jamon Shepherd, Marlon Martin, Jaheem Thomas, a familiar. A trio in the middle of the park, Shea Smith, Warner Brown, and Kimani Arboine complete the lineup for Arnett Gardens. As for Tibbity Gardens, Nicholas Clark wearing the captain's armband. Wants to be at his sharpest tonight. Hasn't been up to scratch in recent weeks. They're number one. He's between the sticks. They'll have a back three of Richard Brown, Barrington Price, or Dean Pennycook. In the middle of the park, Alton Lewis, Howard Morris. Kimali Smith and Keno Simpson. And up top, Nikelia Fuller for his first start for Tivoli Gardens. His only goal in the Premier League is against Arnett Gardens. And Justin Dunn is up there as well for Tivoli Gardens. As we take a look at the full time highlights here, the shot was high from Jaheem Thomas. He would be a little bit more accurate later in the game, but that was a howler from the Arnett Gardens captain, Joel Cunningham. We expect a lot better from him. Just a lapse in concentration there. And uh, in came Dunn. And he finished it well. <laughs> and they were loving it. They really were loving it. Arnett Gardens tried to get back into this contest, but the chances were few and far between, weren't they? Hopeful crosses inside the box. Not going anywhere. Shot from Arboine. Plucked out of the evening sky by Clark. And at the back post there, headed wide. And then that free kick also off target. But they were creating chances. Martin. Across to Thomas. Jaheem Thomas finding the back of the net. And they were back in it. 
it was 1-1 at the time. And that was probably the, the only time they were in rhythm on it gardens. Dunn allowed so much space inside the box. Where were the defenders? Nowhere near. Dunn. That was a sports max that moment of the game. What a finish that was. Second of the night. Ball over the top. Anthony Nelson with a big chance here. And White in the way, denying him. The scoreline could have been worse. It really could have been. They thought they should have wrapped up the match there. And again, problems at the back. Opportunity. So much time. And then the shot deflected inside to complete his hat-trick. Justin Dunn. Came off Neil. And the job was done after that. Good night, sweet prince, they said. They could have made it interesting in the closing stages, just inside the area. Rushiki Kelson was clipped, and Arboine, Kimani Arboine sends it wide. That was their cue to leave in the aftermath of the apology. Could have been a fourth. Mackenzie driving that one goal words and White with the save. And that was that. But it must be said, Tivoli probably deserved the three points at the end of, of play. Oh yeah, I mean, I think they created more opportunities than us, to be fair. Um, they hit us in transition and we didn't handle it very well at all, you know? We had our moments at the game. Um, I didn't think we were smart enough in terms of when we had possession building out, you know? I think we made some poor decisions. Um, and they hit us in transition and we have to give them credit. I think they, they, they created more goal scoring opportunities than us tonight. And we just weren't good enough tonight and, and, and um, I must apologise to the fans for the disappointing performance. Well, Jerome, you were very confident before this match that you would be able to get the three points against Arnett and you are a man of your word, you delivered. Yes, um, I saw Arnett on the day that I lost that game and I saw where the strength of the team can be nullified. In the end, you know, we, we did that, and it was good to know that youngster Justin Dunn came up with three goals. Tivoli came into the jungle and took all three points to cap off an enterprising Sunday of football in the JPL. Much more action still to come as we go to another break. Stay with us. Welcome back to JPL in 30. Sabina Park may be the mecca of cricket in Jamaica, however, the beautiful game will take over the venue for another Monday night doubleheader. First up, Clarendon-based Humble Lion entertain the stars of the East Harbour View. Donald Oliver and Chris Taylor were on commentary duties. Welcome once again to Sabina Park as we prepare for action in the Ray Nebu Jamaica Premier League on the evening skies here at uh, what is the mecca of Jamaica's cricket, or was. Harbourview against Humble Lion is the first up on the agenda and uh, looking forward to this fixture. And we're... As we take a look at the starting lineup for Harbourview, Anthony Bennett is between the sticks. They have a, a back four of the captain, Olin Harding, Romain Brackenridge, Shamari Dyer and Okima Jones in the middle of the park. Uh, Kasim Priestley, Jashon Anglin and Ajuma Johnson and up top Shaquille Bradford will uh, more than likely play on the left as Andre Fagan goes to the middle. Omar Thompson who got a goal midweek in a losing cause will be on the right hand side. 
This is the starting line of four humble line. Prince Daniel Smith is between the sticks. Fabian Pascoe, Ricardo Campbell, Tevoy Colesway, and Xavier Virgo, the experienced right back uh, as part of the back four. FIBA Chambers, Andrew Vanzi, the captain, and Jardel Williams uh, in the middle of the park. Roshane Sharp, Andre Clennon leads the line uh, alongside Jermaine Christian, the number nine. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here, and how about you, they started off pretty strongly here. Lovely run by Omar Thompson off the bar, and then Shaquille Bradford with the finish from inside the box. Thompson did really well, and uh, Bradford picking that one up after Johnson had set him up unwittingly, I felt. He was looking for the penalty. And uh, Andrew Price was livid with his defenders. They got the equalizer. Eventually, not with this play though, lovely ball inside and Clennon with the header. No issues there for Anthony Bennett. Clennon sending it out wide to Virgo. Virgo's ball inside, found Williams who found the gap at the near post there. Beating Anthony Bennett. What a finish that was. It was a really good goal. Only one place he could go and he found it. And then they went ahead. The captain finding the corner. And Bennett at full stretch couldn't get there a crowd of players keeper probably saw that one late but Vanzi getting his second goal of the campaign there ball over the top Bradford did well but uh, Smith did better after being initially no man's land Bradford again looking to flick that one and then head that one and then Thompson didn't have a lot of power behind that one. Jones hitting the target again Smith with the save. And in the second half parting with a peach of a ball to Andre Fagan opening his account this season. Look at this delivery perfection and the finish was clinical too ball over the top for humble lion as they were looking for the go-ahead goal as well that was good work by afiba chambers but his effort just dragged wide Lodlo, analyze that match for me. It seemed like you were right there. Uh, you had probably the best opportunities near in the end of the game, but you just couldn't find the finish. Yeah, but before you even get to that, um, before you even get to that, Chris, we, we need to stop conceding um, unnecessarily. Um, I think that the two, the efforts that we made to go ahead was good build-up play, you know, good possession and good passing and creating the chance. But Whenever we give up goals like these, it is really a cause of concern. And I find that um, my defenders need to do better at the back of the pitch and give the fours a chance. Uh, because I know that we will score goals, but we need to stop conceding. And it's getting too out of hand right now. A tough draw for you as well, Andrew Price. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought you, I thought Humberland was quite enterprising throughout the 90 minutes. Yes, I think um, our intensity went down in the second half. I think that you know we didn't play the way we played the first half, where we were more intense and more aggressive. We came down a little bit low, and our energy levels looked very low. And you know we brought Arborview back into the game. But despite all of that, I thought we got some very good looks in the second half where we should have really taken the game. You know we got about two chances in the penalty box that with a little bit more composure we should have put away those chances. So. All in all, I think it's a fair result. I mean, we're going to have to continue to work hard. We have to be consistent. We have to keep our energy levels high for 90 plus minutes. And I don't think we had that today.
an exciting encounter which see the teams sharing the spoils. The second match of the doubleheader on Monday saw Cavalier FC locking horns with Waterhouse FC who were looking for their third win on the trot. Here is Donald Oliver once again. Hello and welcome to Sabrina Park for Monday Night Football. And the crowd building all the time for this fixture. And it's Cavalier and Waterhouse meeting up in the battle of former champions here in the parish of St. Andrew. Cavalier, the home team tonight. We take a look at their starting lineup. Jadeen White between the sticks. They have a back three of Giovanni Leng, Kyle Ming, and Shamar Watson. In the middle of the park, Christopher Ainsworth, Dwayne Allen, Mario Smith, and Gadela Irving up top. Chanel Thomas, uh, Jerome McCleary, and the 20 year old from Antigua and Barbuda, Jalmara Calvin. As we take a look at this Waterhouse unit, Kemar Foster, the, of course, the captain between the sticks, Nevada Blair, Keith Simpson, Elvis Wilson, and Keneal Hyde, the back four in the middle of the park, Andre Smith, alongside Devonte Walker, behind Nicoy Christian, Donato Thomas on the left, uh, Andre Fletcher on the right with a couple of goals beside his name, and of course the new boy who's been impressive so far, Javain Bryan, with three strikes. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here, not a whole lot to write home, home about to be fair. Chances were few and far between. Blair's ball inside the area and uh, didn't get a proper connection on that one, Javain Bryan. This was flicked through and uh, Fletcher forced a save from J.D. White. And here's McCleary. They're appealing for a handled ball there. Not the best clearance from Wilson and Ainsworth. <laughs> Placing that in the corner. Was it deliberate? You tell me. But Ainsworth thinks so. Getting by Kemar Foster in the process. And then not too long after, a little bit of fortune with that goal. There was a handled ball in the build-up. But uh, some good work here from Javain Bryan across the face of goal. And Donato Thomas with the finish. His second goal of the campaign. That was 1-1. One -one. Ainsworth. Dragging that across and the, the shot, the resulting effort wide of the mark. There was a deflection there. And then in the second half, Blair doing well. Jadine White with a hand on it. Sophie Brown was lurking behind and then look at this run from Fletcher. And then in the end, Thomas placing that wide of the mark and that was the end of the game Rodolfo I see you giving Giovanni a high five so you certainly agree that he had a good performance today oh definitely um, it's a difficult fixture I just thought it was a really good game still the quality was really good so I'm um, yeah I thought he did well I know for you you spoke about the fact that the squad was thin and a lot of players out of contention at the moment but based on what you had at your disposal how would you assess your performance no, as a team? I think we did very well. Um, we were up against a quality team, um, coming from a high of winning. So I would knock my team too hard. I would have preferred a win, but that's how it goes sometimes. Damien Gordon with me, the assistant coach at Waterhouse. Damien, do you think a fair result at the end of 90 minutes? I mean, I believe so. Um, there are some moments that we had in the game where we could have won it, but it is football. I think we, we should have taken our chances, and uh, we didn't do that tonight. Rudolph said the quality of the play was high. I would think to myself, based on what I've seen from even Waterhouse in the two previous matches, that this play didn't actually match up to those performances. I mean, it depends on the opponent. Um, I think what we did tonight was trying to cancel each other's out, and I think that that's what you saw tonight. Um, at, at the first part, he tried to press us, and then after he started to sit deep, so he made some adjustment on that. Um, 
good goal from us, good team goal. I think they scored a free cup of goal. I mean, so it is football. And, and in terms of play, I think we were a better team tonight. But whosoever is better, it's still a draw. Let's recap match week four in the Jamaica Premier League. Mount Pleasant with a 3-1 win over Malines United. 1-1 between Montego Bay United and Bear United. Portmore with a 2-0 win over Dunby Holden. Treasure Beach beating Lime Hall 1-0 in the Battle of the New Boys. Tivoli 3-1 over Anna Gardens at the Anthony Swalling Sports Complex. 2-2 between Harbourview and Humberland. And 1-1 between Cavalier and Waterhouse. Mount Pleasant, they are top of the standings on nine points. They are just two points ahead of Waterhouse, who have played a, a game more. Uh, Tivoli Gardens on six, so too Port United, and it Gardens and Humbland rounding out the top six in the rare every Jamaica Premier League. And that's how we put a wrap on JPL in 30 on your home of champion Sportsmax. Tune in next week for another exciting edition.